welcome to the first video on basic MRI ingredients. In this course I will often use common language in order to loosen things up a little bit and to be able to move through the material quickly. It is not intended to be a replacement for a university level course, but I would like to give you the tools needed to understand common concepts in this field and in order to maybe have an easier access to, to textbooks. Furthermore, I will make extensive use of all the gestures. For example, you will see me uh, with an arm up to signify the magnetization in the Z direction and maybe even rotating with the spins in order to make a point. Let's dive right in and let's get one thing out of the way. RF stands for radio frequency. It is coined because most of the signal of MRI in the typical field strengths that we have available is ranging from several kilohertz to several megahertz. Now this is also where your radio signal is typically transmitted and hence the community has adopted this term radio frequency pulses. So what you will often see in a textbook is a magnetic field in the z-direction shown as an arrow. And we will do that here as well. And it's often called B0. This is the polarizing magnetic field. And then you might see, might see that um, given enough time the spins or the excess population of spins will align with this magnetic field giving rise to the magnetization. So the second thing you might see is a thicker arrow with an M on it for magnetization. And this might be called M0 as well to say okay this is the magnetization that we are starting out with. So this is the first ingredient we need a polarizing magnetic field. Now that we have created a magnetization in the Z direction we need some method of detecting its presence. And the way we do this is with coils that are picking up an electromagnetic signal. It's very similar to an antenna. And we will make this drawing uh, just as a solenoid coil that is perpendicular to this magnetization. And in electromagnetics we might just draw it like this, the windings in this direction. And this is tuned to a certain frequency so that the signal of this magnetization can be picked up. However, if we only have the magnetic field and the magnetization, that is not enough to detect the signal because this is static. Nothing is changing right here. We need to first get this magnetization out of its Z direction and tip it into the XY plane, where we then can pick up with the coil. The way we do this is we are exciting the magnetization with that same coil and disturb it from its equilibrium position. The way this is done is by sending an alternating current through this coil, which I will indicate here with these two arrows, meaning that the magnetic field inside the coil is changing back and forth. And it is coupling with this magnetization. Now when you see drawings like this, you will have to imagine that this coil is actually around the system. But since this is a bit hard to, to draw and we just are interested here in the basic components, we can uh, make do with that for now. Now we are ready to put it all together in a simple animation. I'll make some space so that we can have some time to look at what is happening to our spins and our detected signal. You can see you have our polarizing magnetic field and the spins are aligned with it and then the radio frequency pulse is transmitted. Our marvelous RF pulse is indicated by the blinking of the coil. It tips the spins into the XY plane and right after we can receive the signal as induced voltage in the same coil. The signal oscillates with the same frequency as the spins and also there is a decay there. Why is this? It turns out that each spin is rotating with a slightly different speed and so they get out of step with each other. Now let's have a look at it again from a slightly changed perspective to see what's happening. Now in the beginning the spins are quite well rotating in step, but as time goes on the differences are appearing. Despite our best efforts, spin stones experience the same magnetic field B0, but a small change depending on the design of the magnet 
and also the nature of the sample itself. This decay is often exponential with a decay constant T2 star. I would like to go over this process again and give you a drawing that you might find in textbooks so that you can recognize uh, when it is occurring. Let's start again with our magnetization in the Z direction. Here we have our M0 polarized in the beginning and the radio frequency pulse is tipping the spins into the XY plane like so and we might call this M x y now this tip angle is 90 degrees and that's why this radio frequency pulse is often called a 90 degree pulse in order to become really proficient at mri we will need one more concept and that is the so-called pulse sequence and it turns out that we can write this process of tipping the magnetization by any angle as a as the pulse sequence which is showing us the events as they pl play out over time. And the most basic pulse sequence that we have is the um, 90 degree excitation and then the corresponding free induction decay. The way we can draw this is by having a time axis in the horizontal direction with T and the RF pulse can be shown as a thin box and often is written which angle it is tipping by and the time here is indicating okay it takes some finite amount of time to pr to make this process happen and then when we are switching our coil to receive mode we will have our electromagnetic signal that is decaying like so and that is called the free induction decay